which symbolizes the pinnacle of speed on water, the most demanding and dangerous motorsport of all. 3,000 horsepower gas turbines, 300 kilometers an hour. A track so volatile it can reduce a race boat to matchsticks in the fraction of a second. The sport, unlimited hydroplane racing. And this, the ultimate prize. The brainchild of His Excellency Sheikh Hassan bin Jabir Al Thani, the Oryx Cup has enjoyed spectacular success in the National Amphitheatre of Doha Stunning Bay. And as with any motorsport, the Oryx Cup is more than merely a trophy. There are winners, there are losers. Always high octane danger. Sweat, tears, and incessant drama. 2009, J. Michael Kelly pulling off a dramatic victory after Steve David's breathtaking somersault. Jeff Bernard's dice was disaster. And Dave Vilwalk's fateful fireworks on the final lap. To find myself number one in the world, uh, you know, it's a dream come true. 2010, Vilwok thought he'd blown his chances again, this time in the heat, but came back sensationally to snatch a dramatic win from an outside lane in the final. To race for an entire country, an entire people, to have that honour and responsibility at the same time was, was what drove, drove me to, to a... <laughs> I'm a little choked up. <laughs> it drove me to a, a new place. And last year, after all the big guns that successfully reached the shootout, three then went off early, served their sentence, and Scott Lidico left town with the booty. It's just it's been an awesome weekend. It's had its highs and lows, but it's, uh, it ended really well. So to the 2012 title, the world's 10 fastest men on water are back in Doha and will qualify through four gruelling heats to determine who will contest Saturday's final. Early hiccup in the proceedings though, predicted high winds tomorrow bringing the time trials plus the heats 1, 2 and 3 forward by 24 hours, meaning it's jam-packed action in the twilight as the sun sets on day one. Oh boy, Alberto Steve David comes into the weekend leading the USA National High Points Championship, of which this is also the final round, by the way. But Qatar driver Bill Watt reduces that to 632 points, setting the fastest time in qualifying. And then... I don't think we'll say. Bill Watt has been disqualified from Heat 1A for a fuel violation, and a win for David in Heat 1B pushes his lead back up to 1,012 points. They're saying our low pressure flow is over, but they sent out all the equipment to get recalibrated. Our high pressure flows are fine. Uh, their data didn't work in the first session this morning, so they had to give us new cables, and their box didn't work in the next session. Now they're saying that we're over in fuel. We monitor every boat with a flow meter, and we monitor the low pressure flow. The fuel flow must not exceed 4.1 gallons per minute. Bill Walker's then disqualified from heat 2A for hitting several turn boys in a fit of peak. His boat is damaged and chances of an Oryx final are diminishing. A bad day just got worse. And they didn't give us enough time to get from the trailer to the water, just plain and simple. We waited for the cranes. We let the other boats get in because we always wait. I, I, I don't know what happened. I cannot delay the race for one boat so he gets in. All the other boats were allowed to make to get into that heat. Several made it, some didn't. Dark day for Qatar team, and to compound the issue, David achieves his national high points target in Heat 2B. Finishing ahead of Shane and Zimmerman, giving him an unsustainable lead and no sympathy for Wilcox woes. Do you have any sympathy at all with them? No. With Phil Walk unable to make the start of Heat 3A and in seriously compromised light, a darkness to you and me, Steve David, oh boy Alberto, leads from Kit Brown, Miss Red Dot, 
J. Michael Kelly Beacon Plumbing and Mark Evans Formula Boats. David extending his advantage throughout the race to win his third heat of the day. Sun eventually sets during Heat 3B. Racing by instinct, there's a classic scrap between Jimmy Shane, Graham Trucking, and Brian Perkins, U88. Rubbing paint all the way, Shane prevailing in the end by just a couple of roosters. John Zimmerman, Jones Racing, trails in third. Tom Thompson, Peters and May is fourth. Brian Mallow, U100, is forced out halfway. But no doubt, who's man of the day? Three heat wins a day, it locks in the national championship for us. It's our fourth team national championship and my sixth driver's title. And uh, you can't happen without a team, though. It's not just the drivers. You see, it's everybody working together to make it happen. So this is a huge celebration for my 13,000 owners back in Madison, Indiana. This is a cool day. Back to the Orange Cup now then, and lead aboard at the end of day one. Steve David over the bar at the top. Dave Vilwock dropping off the bottom and relying on one very slim last chance saloon. Just two heats and a final left then. Vilwock goes into the second heat. This is the first. It's day two. Your lineup is Steve David, U6. In form, Brian Perkins, U88. Kit Brown, U17. J. Michael Kelly, U37. And Mark Evans, U57. Countdown to zero. Five. Four, three, two, one, go! J. Michael Kelly on your right, David alongside him, then it's Brown, Perkins and Evans heading into the critical turn one, over 250 kilometres an hour. Pulling around, 3G, Kit Brown, third. Steve David there on his left is second. But both trailing this man, J. Michael Kelly, 2009 Oritz Cup winner. Under investigation, though, for jumping the start. Under pressure, too, here from Steve David and picking him off easily on the back straight. You saw there. Oh boy, Oberto at the sharp end once more. Three wins out of three this weekend. And with arguably his biggest Oritz Cup threat, Dave Vilwalk, and likely to make tomorrow's final. Big opportunity here for the Madison man to go all the way and become the first driver to hold both national high points and Orange Cup titles in the same year. Pulling away now from Kelly and Brown, this red dot, he's third. Perkins, 88 is fourth. Evans, Formula Boats, is fifth. Incidentally, the last lap tells us the track is not quite as benign as it looks. Average speed, 223.418 kilometres an hour. Some way short of the record here. Phil Watt holds that with an average nearer 240 during qualifying. Back in 2010, that is. Brian Perkins is fourth. Pretty certain that's good enough to see him through to the final if he can hold on to it. One lap to go. Oh, boy, it's Oberto holding all the trump cards. As we suspected, J. Michael Kelly has been penalised a lap for jumping the start. Needed a top result to haul himself into the final shootout, and he ain't going to get that now. So, hop, skip and a jump for David. It's four out of four, and the dream of the double lives on. Third place for Brian Perkins books his final slot. Kim Brown won't make it, though. A total of 6.30 points, not good enough which means 500 points, the maximum that Vilwok can now muster won't be good enough either. It's Heat 4B, the Qatar driver, lane one, racing for pride. Here they go. From the right, Vilwok, Shane, Zimmerman, Thompson and Evans. Vilwok number one, more wins than any other H1 driver and demonstrating why, thundering into the first turn. Jimmy Shane, nose in front, off the start, never going to hold the big man with lane advantage. Pumping up the G's through turn one, slamming down the throttle, stamping his authority on the back straight. Riding with Shane, and not good news for him, ahead of the clock at zero. It's a penalty lap for Graham Trucking. Whoa, whoa, and big moment here for Phil Walk. 
tossed up, flying high, turn two up to its own tricks. The Qatar man slowing down with a major issue. Oh, the engine appears to be broken from its mount. The fire there too. Shane leads. Zimmerman moves into second. Thompson's third. It's a red flag. Fire spreading. Fire boat on its way. Oh, scary moments here as Dave Phil what begins his escape. What a fire. It's unclipping the hatch. The rear of the boat engulfed in flames and terrifying moments here for the nearest and dearest. This is terrible. Always the risk of explosion, but Vilwok staying until the fire crew arrived, removed the hatch so they could do their job. The great man. Right now, coming well, one mighty leap too many. Launched by a road wave into two spine juddering flat landings that may have snapped the drive chain and then that in turn triggering the fire. One, two, well, three in fact. The engine cowl ripped off by the force and the fire starts. Uh, I just hit a big ground swell out there and got up in the air and the motor exploded. How does that happen? I don't know, I just, you know, when the propeller goes out of the water, the engine goes up on RPM, the blades come out. They were telling me to get out of the boat and get on the rescue boat, but I've been, I've been to those movies before, <laughs> so you know if you don't get the cowl off, because other people don't know how to get the cowl off, yeah. that many times the fire gets much more ferocious inside the boat. So I quickly pulled the pins out, threw them in, and dumped the cowl off, and then the guy did a great job of hitting it with water immediately. A mess of major proportions. Brand new, $250,000 gas turbine engine, trashed. And trouble elsewhere too. Thompson also towed in, and a race against time now to make the rerun. We got a little wet in the turn lining up for the start and got a lot of salt in the motor, so it's not running clean. And we're supposed to go back in the water and rerun that heat at four o'clock. Can you fix that? We're hoping we can. We're going to put a good wash on the motor, and this Peters and May team does a fantastic job. They worked their butts off all weekend, so we're not giving up now. We'll be there. Thank you. And so will we. See you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Doha, or it's cut. Heat four, rerun, ready to roll. And after all the drama at the first attempt, a bit of an anti-climax this time, I reckon. Just three drivers make the lineup. Mark Evans along with Dave Vilwock, the absentees, from which you will gather the Peters and May pit crew accomplished their task, and Tom Thompson has made it. Here we go. John Zimmerman on your right, Jimmy Shane in the middle, and really no contest to be fought. Shane carrying over his extra penalty from the first run. Can't win it, but doesn't need to. He will qualify anyway. Same goes for Zimmerman, both with enough points to see them safely through. Slightly different for Thompson, as far as I know, he needs to score something. Has to finish. Pressure on him. Down the back straight. Well, contest or not, Jimmy Shane, U5, Graham trucking, determined it would seem to give Zimmerman a good run for his money anyway. Throwing it all in. Takes an insane sort of fella, doesn't it, to throw a boat into the turn in that way, given what happened at this spot just 50 minutes ago. Zimmerman up for the challenge, hits the front again with the help of the inside lane. By the way, any of you out there wondering why Shane didn't cut across to that inside lane on the back straight, the rules are specific. You must have a lead of at least two rooster tail lengths before doing so. That rule strictly enforced. Over three kilometres an hour difference between them in qualifying. Shane at 227.294 kilometres an hour. Clear advantage of 5.090 over Zimmerman. And that beginning to show now. Thundering exit there from Shane, turn one, lap two, providing the required two roosters. Should be able to cruise in from here. Extra penalty lap, so he can't win. But Zimmerman with a little bit to ponder now before they face up again in that final shootout. Different ball game, but Shane is up for the cut, no doubt about that. It's a great run in the setting sun. Not quite good enough with that penalty to take the 400 points. In the end, just a third behind Tom Thompson, who hit his target too. So let's get an update now on that earlier incident when Dave Vilwalk's Oryx ambition finally went up in smoke. 
Eric Elstrom giving Sheikh Hassan the lowdown. Earlier I asked the crew chief where it leaves the team now. You know, the more we dig in, the more we find. We got uh, our wiring harnesses. We run three sets of harnesses in the boat so we can just quick change them. They're all melted together, so we actually have to cut it out of the boat. There's more delamination because of the heat. We've got some busted air traps. Spons and tips are broken. There's just more and more damage. So there's just more and more work that we're going to have to do. So, what chance of making the next round in just 24 days? The boat is hurt worse than it's ever been hurt before. And uh, being so far from the shop, uh, a lot of stuff that we have there and the molds we have there to build parts are there. Uh, we've already been in contact with the shop to get the molds down, so if we have to build stuff to fly it here, but uh, it, it, it just don't know the answer yet. <laughs> oh, could this be the answer? A little Scandinavian magic. OK, this one is a one to six scale uh, hydroplane. Uh, the hole is made from carbon fiber. Some gimmicks on this boat are a working front canard. It's mixed up with a throttle channel, so when you go on the throttle, it goes up like the rear ones. The skid fin area is the same as the big boats. We try to copy all the details with the, with the bracking, the skid fin and the holders. The rudder turns left and right to the, uh, like the rear ones. We even had some lights in the exhaust pipe made from LEDs. This boat is electric powered. We have an uh, engine in that makes up to 15 horsepower. It's uh, loaded up with uh, batteries with uh, 42 volts and up to 500 amps. So this uh, makes a speed of around 75 miles per hour. May struggle getting Phil walk in the cockpit, of course. Time to move on and the lineup for the shootout. The top five make the grid. J. Michael Kelly is the trailer boat. Kip Brown is the first reserve. And here's Steve David. We've had a fantastic weekend here in Doha. We've won all four heats. And now if I can just pull off this final, we will have won the national championship and the, the world championship. So this will be a tremendous weekend for Madison, Indiana, and the Oboe Alberto. I think everybody's going to be strong out there. Um, everybody's going to obviously be running hard for the Orcs Cup. Um, we're hoping to be out there in front with... Uh, in front of everybody. Made as a trailer boat, which, you know, you don't always want to go into the final as a trailer, but I've been there before. Um, you know, you can always try to pick up positions and stuff like that. Uh, got to start five seconds behind the rest of the guys. So, you know, at the same time, it's kind of fun, though, because you get to see what you can do, see if you can drive through the field and see what you can get. Right then, grab the edge of your seats, take a deep breath. It's time for the Oryx Cup final. Counting down to the one-minute mark, at which point manoeuvring for a position will cease. Lane held becomes your grid position for the race at that point. It's like two starts. There it is. Jimmy Shane just squeezing into lane one in the nick of time you saw there on that mark. That's a crucial first step. 49 seconds. We want to beat that entry probably about 20. Our check's going to be eight. Steve David in lane two is the second phase of the start, the all-important run to the line, gathers momentum, hit it before zero seconds, remember, carries a penalty lap. Cat and Max once again in gathering gloom here in Doha as the sun sets. Is anyone brave enough to take the line flat out? Get it right and you can win from lane five. Get it wrong and you're buried. J. Michael Kelly as trailer boat starts five seconds behind the front line, turning into the straight ahead of the start. One, two, three, four, Eight, four, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go! Shane on the right, David on the left. Run down there, bud. You gotta get him. Steve David's pit crew there. Try to catch him. Yeah. Brian Perkins and John Zimmerman outside him. Uh, Thompson has problems. The start is clean. Scintillating Shane through the first 1,000 metres, taking the early grip. David with work to do. Now in the back straight, 285 kilometres an hour, 100 metres every second. Disqualified. Oh, disqualification. That's Jimmy Shane they're referring to. Keep back after it. There's a confusion here. Well, what is that all about? Start definitely clean, so it can't be that. Confusion. Steve David moves up. He and John Zimmerman both have the message. Still not clear what is going on, though. Yeah, we got to run him down. He's, he's legal. Got a rooster toe on us, though. 
Oh, well, that just about clears it up. Short and sweet, mistaken identity. It's J. Michael Kelly who's got the chop. Ignoring officials' requests to leave the inside lane on the start run, we're told. Well, 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 that's a pity. And oh, there he is, returning to the dock, empty handed. Started and enforced five seconds behind the rest as trailer man. Guess he thought he'd have a punt. Not much to lose back there, to be perfectly honest. Anyway, he's gone. Owner's back on Steve David for a couple of seconds. He must have thought Christmas had come early. Yeah, but it was a 37, it was penalized, not the five. We've got to go get him. He's slowing down a little bit. Let's keep chasing him. Six lap race, three and a bit minutes left to catch Jimmy Shane, pass him, and lift the Oryx Cup for the first time. Zimmerman playing spectator, five kilometers an hour slower than both David and Shane in qualifying. Pope's really resting on an inside lane at the start. Well, he didn't get that, and now over two seconds adrift of Steve David in second. No joy either for Peters and May. Tom Thompson's brave effort to get to this final won't be rewarded with the podium unless, oh, well, you know the rest. Anything can happen in this sport. Let's check out the speed. Shane average, 218.724 kilometers an hour. David, 220.103. Go we'll get him. Keep pushing on him. Keep pushing on him. Keep pushing on him. Gently reeling him in. The High Point champion, 2005, 6, 8, 9, and 2010 versus Shane, the rookie, first season. Quite a fairy story, whichever way the coin drops. Shane, still hot favourite, of course. Zimmerman, 216.004, holding his pace, holding his place. Fingers crossed, the two ahead might just bust one another, but not very lightly. But you never know. Brian Perkins, fourth, dropping back also. Nothing left in his kitty. Second at the Tri-Cities, Washington in 2008, and third in Seattle 2010. A talented driver, but never quite on the pace this weekend. As Jimmy Shane up ahead there in clear water, up the stakes, last lap, 220.448 kilometers an hour. David responds, 221.192, edging closer, but needs to do even more. One lap after this, 50 seconds, one hazardous home straight, driving blind into the setting sun, one back straight and two raking corners. Two kilometres stand between Jimmy Shane and his Graham trucking machine and the coveted Oryx Cup trophy. Steve David hot on his heels there, still edging up. Pulse is racing as they do. One tiny error, one mechanical gremlin could change everything. Remember, 2009, Phil Watt lost everything on the last lap with a turbine malfunction. 700 metres to go. Tom Thompson moves out of the way. Steve David, one last gasp effort. Shane into Mark II for the final time. Whoa, but he too almost doing a full walk there for a second. Intrepid to the last. Through the turn of terror into the home straight. Steve David won't get him from there. Jimmy Shane wins the Oryx Cup after dominating from the start, trucking down the freeway to become the fourth different winner in four years. For Steve David, the wait must go on. John Zimmerman filling the third podium spot, but nothing, of course, for Perkins or Thompson. Well, happy days at Graham Trucking and a hero's homecoming coming up any second. Boy. <laughs> Trouncing one of the sport's all-time greats in the process. I guess if that's the worst I call you, I'm still doing pretty good. <laughs> Great job, man. Great job. Jimmy Hillary. Good job. Good job, Thanks. Got to be an element of disappointment about this. Um, is it fight another day? How, how oh, yeah, feel? sure, absolutely. We come back in February and, and do our best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you got the number one on your boat next absolutely, year. Absolutely, and that's pretty cool. Right, no, yeah. out here. Jimmy, how about that? Hey, that was fantastic, you know. Couldn't ask for uh, uh, a, a better race, you know. Had a good start, got clear out in front, and uh, was able to drive my own, uh, my own race once I got out in front, so that helped out a lot. Uh, you said it would be pretty good. Yeah. I, I didn't feel now. I'll tell you what, man, this is this is amazing to be over here in this country and to be doing the, the stuff that we do here with the H1 series and the Air National Guard. It's it's amazing. It's just um, it's kind of speechless. It's I'll tell you what, man, it's crazy. 
A tale of two titans, one attempting but unable to hide his bitter disappointment, the other barely able to contain his excitement. That's racing. And so, a great weekend in the world capital of power boating comes to an end, and not without its controversy and drama. But then, this is the Oryx Cup after all.